you know, I just process wanna, that it took to yeah, get there. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, in other words, uh, they don't want to have they 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 don't want to have to practice. They just want to be instant successes yeah. and stuff. And that might be that's our fault and stuff. Um, I blame a lot of it on the, the, the TV type of thing. I mean, the, the, these TV programs tend to make it unrealistic, yeah. meaning that they can, they can turn on the hunting shows on TV and they're very influenced oh, boy. on those. Yeah. But these hunting programs they're basically are showing, they're showing the kill, the kill, the kill, yes. you know, and um, the uh, um, the the youth of today is being taught that hunting is basically sitting over in a shooting house over a food plot. Mm -hmm. That's hunting, right? You know, type of thing. And you know, shoot that one, Bobby. You know, yeah. that type of thing. As they're sitting in a, a and, elevated uh, yeah. uh, shanty or a, yeah, yeah, shanty. the I shooting house. Shanty. They're yeah. aptly named. But right. it, anyway, my point is that. I feel sorry that, and, and well, no, I'm, I'm getting that. ahead of myself too. No, you're not. I don't that think so. They're also, I, I get discouraged when, even when they're sitting in the shooting house with their father or grandfather waiting for the buck to step out in the, you know, in the, the, the uh, food plot, they're playing their Game Boy thing, yeah. you know, and, you know, let me know if you see one, Dad, type of thing, yeah. you know, and, you know, anyway, I, I don't. I don't think that's hunting. That's shooting, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. And I'm that, that's why I started. The, I started these boot camp things just, you know, for the youth. And it has progressed. I've done them. This will be my what 14th year. And basically, I take. I started, and I still. I still do have kids come. I give them, a, you know, a discounted rate type of thing. But the kids come, and I love to see the father and or the uh, the father or the grandfather and the grandkids and stuff. Mm. But my my whole uh, intention is to teach them. Most of the guys that come are avid hardcore hunters, and I program it that I want them to go home, and what I can hand to them, to, they can take it home and relate the similar er, situation at behind, you know, mm -hmm. on their farm or behind yeah. their house or down the road or wherever they're hunting. And they can, you know, and, and I also like to have hunting partners or, you know, I say, especially father mm -hmm. sons, you get the bonding type of thing, but two guys, uh, you know, that hunt the same area and stuff, and then they go home and they each teach their kids, mm -hmm. you know, down. this is, this is what Barry yeah. said to do, and, yeah. you know, and I'll, I'll pick something out, and, you know, I'll, there's, there's so many things, that, as I said, that, that are hard, you can go to the seminars, you can read the books, you can watch the DVDs and the TV programs, but there's a lot of things that are hard to understand unless somebody actually takes you and shows you. And um, I, I use, like, uh, for example, light intensities, you know, where you, you go, the canopy, you know, mm -hmm. oh, they're, they're, it's thinner here than it is, is over, so more sunlight's coming in here, and this will, there, there's a thicker understory here than there is here, that's an edge, or, you know, for example, uh, edge. Everybody knows that where the field and the timber hits, that's an edge, you know, and the deer follow edge. But I know I'll take them in the woods and say, notice how this, these softwoods here stop right here and then from there to the west it's all hardwoods. That's, you know, a, an edge type of thing. You'll find that the deer will normally be just, you know, downwind of that edge and their one jump to security type of thing where they can smell where they can't see and see where they can't smell. Therefore, they're going to be, and this lines up with that over there. And consequently, you know, you, you need to put your, your tree stand in, in this particular. Okay, and, and I use these examples. Um, again, I was, I was showing one to, I can't remember if it was Ed or Richard the, the other day. It, it, there's a ridge that it's, it's got a flat on the top of it and it's the the width of that narrowest part is probably only I don't know 30 40 yards something like that maybe maybe 50 but and then it drops off okay 
and that flat normally has a, a deer trail, uh, you know, down the middle of it, but if you look carefully, there'll also be one, you know, on the up wind side of it and on the downwind side, on the, 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 the slopes. And normally, in other words, say, for example, the ridge runs east-west, all right? Mm -hmm. the, the predominant wind direction is around here is from the south southwest. So I'm saying I've noticed that, that. Yeah. most of the deer, when they, and in the evening, when they're going to the food source, they will walk on the downwind side of, of that ridge, not on the flat in the middle, and you know, not on the upwind mm -hmm. side, but on the downwind side, they'll walk on that so they can see what they can't smell and smell where they can't see. If it's a north wind, they'll be on the south side of it, on a downwind side of it. So consequently, you oftentimes have to have two stands set up for a pinch that might be two different wind directions. And I've said, and this is evening, and it just, a lot of this is nothing but common sense. Mm -hmm. In other words, this is evenings. In the morning, they might walk right down the center of that ridge, and you say, why are they doing that? Well, a couple, you think about it again. Well, it, number one, they've been up all night. They've got no interference. There's been no people, bloggers, mm -hmm. bird watchers, small game hunters, no traffic. You know, everything's been, you know, cool during the middle of the night type of thing. You know, it's Nobody there. looking for Indian yeah. artifacts. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> Nobody's disturbing them at all. So, and then consequently, they feel very secure going down to their beds. Then they'll, they'll, they'll walk down the center of that and they'll, they'll a lot of, often the, the fingers will drop down, they'll have shelves on them. And they'll sit on, you know, they'll bed on one of those shelves with the wind at their back so they can see what's, you know, they're, mm -hmm. they can smell what's behind them and they can't see and see what's where they can't smell type of thing. And then in the afternoon, they know they're, you know, going to the field, but they also know there's been all kinds of traffic and I heard voices up there in the field and I don't know if it's a farmer or a hunter, you know, so they'll slowly pick their way up, you know, and ease up into the field on that we're using the wind to their advantage so they know I can smell what I can't see. And, and people don't, that's one of the, the, I say the secrets, people don't realize how much they use their sense of smell for staying alive. Yeah. I mean, uh, we use it because, you know, again, it smells, dinner smells good or whatever yeah. type of thing, or, you know, I smell fire or whatever, but, you know, I mean, they use their sense of smell every day, yeah. all the time, you know, for... I remember for, a guy talked about a, uh, I don't think who that was, but uh, about east winds back in Michigan. Mm -hmm. We get, you know, this time of year, it starts switching from that southwest, we'll start getting a west, and pretty mm -hmm. soon that west, northwest, north, mm -hmm. you know, then what, I mean, pretty soon the north winds mm -hmm. comes out of the east, you know, you, well, you, if there's a day you want to take off from hunting, mm -hmm. you get a chore done, mm -hmm. you get a project done, or spend time with uh, Ma, mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's, he said, hey, that, I highly suggest, well, somebody start arguing with him about that. Go ahead, and, keep talking, I'm just yeah. going to show you. Yeah, the and, he, there? and it was a, uh, he says, well, th their whole travel routes are based off, you know, X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. and the wind comes out of the east, which it rarely does. Mm -hmm. They've got to change their whole methodology, and they're going to spend a lot of mental and physical, uh, you mm -hmm. know, uh, just to go from A to B. So there's a real good chance they may, unless they're really, you know, uh, aching for a meal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or pushed, they're going to stay put. They might mm -hmm. not even get out of their beds. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, a lot of that made you know a lot of sense. And this is, uh, I mean, it, again, this is how I do or we do it and, and stuff. But um, for example, I will list eight different wind directions. Okay, I got I got uh, you know three sheets here of morning stands and three sheets of evening stands. I like that. I like okay. That stuff. And you know, north, northeast, east, southeast, south, southwest, west, and northwest. Eight different wind directions. All right, and then name 
or number your tree stand or your yeah. stands, okay? So I get up in the morning, go to the computer, go to the weather channel or whatever, mm -hmm. and I use one that has an hourly yes. prediction. Mm -hmm. And I'll look at the the predicted winds at, you know, say seven, when it first, say it gets light a little after seven, seven o'clock in the morning, you know, okay, we're supposed to have an east wind, you know, between seven and nine. And at nine, it's going to switch to the south. And then by 11, it's going to be switching from the east all the way to the west. So I'll go to my charts and say, okay, I'm going to hunt this morning, you know, here's my options for east stands for morning stands and then at uh, 11 o'clock that's amazing they're gonna switch you know by doing that it's planning your hunt and hunting your plan yes. you know and frankly here plan. like when i lived in montana i this was really tough because of where we lived the continental divide you know, a lot of the winds came in. Some of it came in from the Pacific Northwest. Some came in from Canada, and it would hit the, the, the Continental Divide, and it'll be swirling. You couldn't depend on it. Whereas here, it's. I mean, they're they're very good. I mean, they're they're. You know, yes, sometimes Dependable there's some to count on it. there's some instability, but they'll tell you. Like yet this morning was it yesterday? This morning we were supposed to have two. 180 it was going degrees turns it was going to go from north to south and south to north twice in two hours i think it was or wow. whatever <coughs> so it would seem my like point those, is those you, would be times to be sitting when it switches mm -hmm. to strategize when you are we assuming that it, uh, the deer would would uh, move to a different point so his y yes and no here, no, what no, he, here he, in this you know sight and uh, smell yeah play hit play yeah. for I, I will often give it some, in other words, there's little shifts and stuff. Um, the, uh, the other, the other, other afternoon, it was four o'clock in the afternoon. It, well, I guess it was Sunday. I don't remember a couple, a couple days, three days ago, four days ago, whatever it was. Um, we were supposed to get a northeast wind, all right, and I walked almost the furthest stand I got, okay? I walked all the way back in there, get all set up on the furs, and it's fine for